Alrighty, good morning everyone. Lovely to see you on this auspicious weekend. We've had the King's coronation, A-level students finishing school. We've had Ulster rugby season ending. We've got Gregster's birthday today. It's all, all kicking off. See, we've got some old friends back again. Lovely to see you guys. Lovely to see you. And lovely to see everybody here today. Really, really welcome. Uh, today we're going to be celebrating Holy Communion together, so that's coming a little bit later. And uh, Sonia will be speaking this morning and also this evening because we like to work her hard. So two sessions of Sonia today. She'll be speaking in story and song this evening as well. So a double dose, which is always a good thing. Let's stand together, can we? And let's call each other to worship using the words on the screen. Because that's what we're here for. We're here to worship. We're here to engage with the living God. So let's decide now we're going to do that. So we're not halfway through the service and we suddenly realize what we're doing here. Let's decide now. We're here for God. We're here to engage with Jesus. Come to the waters, you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy wine and milk without money and without cost. My soul for God, for the God. Why spend money on what does not satisfy? Listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call on him while he is near. My soul thirsts for God. For the living God. As the deer thirsts for flowing streams, so we thirst for you, O God. So come, let's worship our life giving God who pours out living water on all who thirst. Let's sing to Him now. You made the big blue sky You made the oceans deep and wide God, you made the trees so tall Cause your love is bigger than it all Because you're bigger than big Stronger than strong
All right, littler ones, who can tell me what happened yesterday that was a wee bit different in the United Kingdom? Maeve. What was that one? King Charles. You're right on the money, Isaac. Well done. Maeve, I know that you knew it as well. Well done. Fantastic. So we're going to watch a, a short video which helps us to think about what happened yesterday from a Christian perspective. And then we're also going to, after the video, we're going to pray for King Charles because the Bible tells us to. You may be very royalist, you may be not so royalist, but the Bible says pray for those in authority over you. So we're going to do it. So we're going to pray for him a little bit later after this video. Did anyone see our Grace over in London? Did you see the wee TV clip? She did great, didn't she? She's a superstar in the making. All right, let's watch this wee video. On the 6th of May, 2023, King Charles III will be crowned as King. He is the 40th monarch to be crowned at Westminster Abbey. The first one was William the Conqueror, who was crowned all the way back in 1066. Lots of the traditions in a coronation have stayed the same for hundreds of years. During the ceremony, the king makes promises to serve he is anointed with oil. He is given precious objects. And then he is crowned. And we might expect that a king with so much fame and power would demand that we serve him. But King Charles has promised to use his life serving us. When his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, died, he honoured her life of serving others. And then he said, Wherever you may live, and whatever may be your background or beliefs, I shall endeavour to serve you with loyalty, respect and love. But King Charles isn't the only king who was chosen to serve. The Bible tells us that there is a king of the whole universe who was coming to the world to serve us, King Jesus. Jesus said he did not come to be served, but to serve. And he showed it again and again as he healed the sick, as he ate with outcasts, and ultimately, as he died on the cross to pay the price for all that we've got wrong. King Jesus is our true and forever servant king. And the coronation is full of things that remind King Charles and us that this is true. The king is given the sovereign's orb, a golden globe topped with a cross. It was made in 1661. As we look at this, we can remember that Jesus is the true king over all the world. He also receives two scepters, golden rods with a cross and dove on top. These are based on shepherd's crooks as we see them, we can remember King Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who lays down his life for his sheep. Finally, the King is crowned with St. Edward's crown. It is topped with a cross, decorated with 444 jewels and weighs almost two and a half kilograms. When we look at this incredible crown, we can remember King Jesus. His crown was not made of jewels, but made of thorns, as he came to serve us by dying in our place. As we celebrate the coronation of King Charles III, let us also celebrate that Jesus is our true and forever servant King. And let us pray for King Charles, that God would help him as he seeks to serve us. So let's do that now as we pray together the words on the screen, okay? Let's pray, our Father. Our Father in heaven, we pray today for our new King Charles III. Grant him your peace as he commits himself again to your service. Give him strength and perseverance as he promises to serve us all as King. 
May he know you're walking with him day by day. Help him to fulfill his vows and promises. May he follow the example of Jesus, the ultimate King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, let's stand together. You know, always look very wary at me whenever I ask you to stand your life. Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. Um, just before we share the peace with each other, in that wee video it said that Jesus came and when he was on the earth he healed people. Did you see that in the video? He healed a lot of people who came to him. And we believe that Jesus by his spirit still heals today. And when we were praying before the service, we asked God, was there anything in particular that you wanted to say? And one of the things that came up was that there may be someone here today who's got a pain in their side and that God would like us to pray for that to be healed. So if that's you and you've got a pain in your side at the end of church, why don't you go and get some prayer with the guys at the front and uh, we'll bring that to Jesus and look to him to heal it. Okay? Now, Christ the King of Kings is our peace. He has demonstrated God's love for us and through him we are able to know and love God and each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Take some time, move about and share peace with each other. You can just shake someone's hand and say the peace of God be with you. Peace be with you guys. So smaller ones, it's time for you to go out to your groups now. So crash age kids out to your left. There's a crash just through to the back. And Sunday school age kids, primary age kids out to your right. Just wait for your leaders before you cross. Have a great, great time. Enjoy yourselves. Come back and tell your families all about it, or whoever you've come with. All right, and the rest of you, you can continue to greet each other if you want, but we're going to uh, sing together. Let's stand and sing. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Wholeheart. Wholeheart, thank you. Let's stand and sing together. Uh mm -hmm. Oh, 
holds me now because your grace holds me now Lord Jesus thank you so much for your grace all of that goodness that abundant blessing that you pour in our lives even though we don't deserve it but because you love us thank you God and Lord as we consider a wee bit more the uh, feast, the invitation to a great party, a great feast that you extend to us. Lord, I pray that we would just be in awe of your grace again. Lord, would you speak through Isaiah 55? Would you speak through Sonia when she comes up to speak after that? And Lord, would we realize that all these things are for us if we'll receive them by faith? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our seats. Let's look at that passage from Isaiah 55. Incredible passage. You say that every week, don't you? Isaiah. Incredible passage. They all are. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me. And eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made a witness to the peoples. A ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not. And nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow up the juniper. Instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for that verse which says that your word won't return empty. And I pray, Lord, that these words from Isaiah 55 will achieve what you desire in us, Lord. That you'd fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit and help us to receive what you have for us today and to respond to it. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Do you like a fancy invitation? Maybe to a wedding or a special birthday event? Our daughter Rebecca has just hit that age where she's getting quite a lot of wedding invitations at the moment and most of them come to our house and I always get a bit excited. It's the romantic in me. Today in our Isaiah series we've reached chapter 55 which you've just read and it's God's great invitation to us. It's an invitation to an experience and to a feast. It's also an invitation to respond to the character that has been introduced in the last few chapters of Isaiah, who we now know is Jesus, the servant. This amazing invitation to feast, to experience, is all about Jesus. And today, through this talk, we're gonna look at three areas. Who is the invitation for? Who takes up the invitation and gets to experience the feast? 
And then, what do they actually get when they do that? So, who's it for? Who takes it up? And what do they get? And if you have a physical Bible or a Bible on your phone, I do recommend that you look up Isaiah 55 and follow along. I think it always helps us to have different ways that we're taking in and also to check that what the person's saying at the front is actually from the Bible. So verse 1 starts off with this call from God. Come all who are thirsty. Thirst and hunger are metaphors for a dissatisfaction and a desire for more. This actually describes every single human being at some point in our life. Wanting more, realizing that there's something in you that isn't satisfied by what's happening at the moment. It's the idea behind the Alpha campaign a few years ago, is there more to life than this? I love the fact that in that campaign, they used brilliant human experiences like climbing a mountain and the elation as you see the view from the top of a mountain. They still use those amazing human experiences because actually even the best human experiences still leave us thirsting for more because we were made for more. We were made for a connection with the divine. We were made for Jesus. God also calls out, come you who have no money. This invitation is not ticket only. It's not something that you can get with your own money or your status or your effort. It's for those who could never afford it. Money can't buy what's on offer. None of us could afford it if we were relying on our own resources. There is a price for this feast, but it's already been paid by Jesus. And we looked at that last week, didn't we? When we looked at the servant song of Isaiah 53, another amazing passage, the suffering on the cross, the price that Jesus has paid. So we have this incredible invitation. And there's a group of people that God singles out in verse seven, the wicked, who don't seem a bit interested. He calls them to turn around from where they're at and to take up this amazing invitation. People sometimes quote the following verses, verses eight and nine from this passage about God's thoughts not being our thoughts and his ways being higher than our ways, but they forget the context of it. Isaiah is telling us that it's God's mercy, his forgiveness and his grace that makes his ways so different and higher than our ways. It's his treatment of those who don't deserve the invitation. It's the way he has mercy and he freely pardons, as it says in verse seven. So different to our intolerant culture where we're so often urged not to be merciful, not to be kind, not to let negative people into our lives unless they're always kind to us. I don't know how often I see quotes about this. Don't give people another chance Cut your circle to only those who build you up. Don't let bad people in. But that is not God's way. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He says, come, those who've let me down. Come, those who are wicked. Come, those who've done wrong to me again and again. Come and accept the invitation to something different. Are we thirsty? Are we poor? Are we wicked? Then this invitation is for us. Of course, each of us, you and me, and actually every single person that we know, we are all those things, thirsty, poor, and wicked, but we often don't realize it. There's a bit in our communion service which says, may we who know our need of grace and I love that. Do you know your need of grace? Do you know that you're thirsty, poor, and wicked? May we know our need of grace. May we realize that without Jesus, we are those things, but that with God's grace, we can take up his invitation and experience this feast. So we can see that this invitation is for all of us, but what does this chapter tell us about who actually takes up this invitation? Who gets to experience the feast? 
In a way, it's kind of obvious. It's those who actually eat, those who partake of what's on offer. Verse, verse 2 tells us that we can eat what is good and delight in the richest affair. But it's just after that strange question, why spend money on what does not satisfy? Oh no, hang on. Why spend money on what is not bread, your labor on what does not satisfy? I was thinking about this in terms of actual food and drink. Why do we, why do people eat food and drink that isn't good for them? that stuff that in the end is no good. Well, sometimes they do actually taste good. Um, sometimes it's habit, it's what you're used to eating. Maybe it's fear of others, you want to stick with the crowd. Maybe it's laziness. It's just easier to eat that stuff. But in the long term, it has a negative impact on our bodies and on our lives. And it's the same spiritually, isn't it? We might realize that feasting on Jesus is the best thing for us, but we enjoy some of the other stuff. We're in bad habits, we're lazy, maybe we're afraid. But feeding our soul on other stuff has a negative impact and won't allow us actually to experience the satisfaction of a life with Jesus at the center. Do you, do you personally know what helps you to grow closer to Jesus? Have a think about that. Do you know what enables you to experience this feast? There's the basics of Bible, prayer, worship, church community, of course, but there's different ways of taking these in. Do you know what helps you? One of my favorite podcasters and Instagrammers at the moment, Jonathan Potkluder, says that one of his favorite times to just feast on Jesus is in the bath. He's away from all the demands of ministry. He can't read his phone. He just takes time to listen and to literally bathe in God's love. What helps you feast on Jesus? What inspires you and draws you closer? And what distracts you and takes you away from feasting on Jesus? What dulls your friendship with him? Maybe there's certain people, programs, music, activities that distract you and take you away from him. There are those foods that do not satisfy. Let's do more of the first and less of the second. In John 6, 27, Jesus said, Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. It's interesting to see how often Jesus uses some of these same metaphors from Isaiah 55 as well to describe himself, his Holy Spirit, and his word. The living water, he talks about. The wine of the kingdom, the bread of life, the milk that sustains. These are all New Testament images too. Let's eat and drink more of these. Back to Isaiah 55, verses 2 three and six make it clear that it's for those who listen seek and call these are proactive verbs about our reaching out for god how often do we actually listen how often do we create that time to give god our undivided attention how often do we turn off our phones and our tvs shut the door and do those things listen seek Call out. I think this is really hard in our culture because we're not used to the discipline of giving our full attention to something anymore. The discipline of quietening our souls to receive. Making space for real communion with God even if it doesn't come instantly. And in my experience, it's rare that this communion with God comes quickly. This experience of the presence of Jesus. We need to allow time and space for that. That's why I love a retreat. A slowing down and a creating of space to feast. So we take up this invitation by turning to God, but we also turn away from things 
Verse 7 says that to receive this glorious feast, the wicked need to forsake their ways and their thoughts. What ways and thoughts are wicked in our lives? If you're at all self-aware, you probably know the ones in your ways and your thoughts, the places that we try to find satisfaction that are not Jesus. There's the old classics, money, sex, whether actual or online, in our minds through pornography and power. And then alongside that, the regulars of gluttony and drunkenness. But there's also the more subtle wickedness of putting things that in their right place are good, instead into God's place, looking to them for satisfaction rather than to Jesus. I think that these three are some common ones in our culture. Idolizing family, work, fitness. They're regular examples of the wickedness of our ways and thoughts. Are those things higher for you than Jesus is? Preparing this sermon has been a challenge to me to think about where I find my satisfaction. Even as Christians, I think we often feel dissatisfied because though we give lip service to Jesus, we're really spending our money, our time and our effort in looking for satisfaction elsewhere. And then we wonder why our Christianity doesn't feel like a feast. We need to keep going back to that living water, to that bread of life, to delight in what will truly satisfy. Thankfully, verse 7 reminds us that when we turn to the Lord, even when we've messed up loads of times and taken our eyes off Jesus, then he has mercy and he draws us back into the feast. So we've read the invitation, we've gone for it and started to eat and drink to seek God, forsaking other things, And then what do we actually get? This passage is just brimming over with the wonderful experience of feasting on God. Satisfaction and delight, everlasting love, splendor, mercy and pardon, fruitfulness, joy and peace. It's a lavish description that has many facets. Some of it reflects the fruit of the Spirit. So much of what grows in us as we feed on the Spirit are things that are actually beautiful inward blessings for our own emotional well-being and their experiences of God's goodness to us. Sometimes I think we think of the fruit of the Spirit like for others, but it's also for us, the experience of God's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, self-control. These are satisfying things to be full of. But of course, they're not just for our own well-being. They're also having a huge impact on those around us. Verse 5 talks about the person who feasts on Jesus being endowed with splendor. We are the people displaying God's greatness to the world at a local and a global level. Within a church and within individuals, you can see when people have been feasting on Jesus. It has an impact. The last bit that struck me in this passage about what we get when we feast on Jesus is in verse 13. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. God's in the business of turning things around. He turns our sorrow into dancing. He turns the ashes of mourning into a crown of beauty. That's just what he does. There's loads of life here on earth, isn't there, that's basically rubbish. That's the thorn bush and the briars. But as we meet, feast on, and keep getting deeper into Jesus, these things get replaced by beautiful, satisfying fruit. Have you experienced that? If you have, tell people about it and keep coming back to Jesus for more. And if you haven't, turn and seek. Come and eat what is good. Of course, we know that this side of heaven, the beautiful, glorious satisfaction of knowing Jesus isn't the only thing that we experience. We are still caught up in the mire at times. And sometimes our 
Dissatisfaction is a godly thing. We're dissatisfied with not seeing more of his kingdom coming now. We're dissatisfied with seeing the mess with people that we know and love. But this morning, let's remember that there is more. That we are invited to partake in the glory and beauty of knowing Jesus by taking up God's invitation to a feast that truly satisfies. We're going to celebrate Holy Communion today. And it's a meal which invites us to remember Jesus and what Jesus has done for us on the cross. But it also reminds us that we're people of a new covenant and anticipates the final glorious feast to which we're all invited. The meal represents the true life that Jesus invites us into. And so as we practice this covenant meal, may it stir within us a hope for his return and a thankfulness for all that Jesus has done for us and offers us already. Remember, we don't get to enjoy the feast because of our own qualifications, our own resources. resources. We are thirsty, poor, and wicked. But Jesus offers us himself and all the joy, peace, and splendor, transformation, and riches of blessings as we take up the invitation. Come and enjoy. Let's just pray again. Lord, I do pray that we would experience more of you, Lord. I pray that the things that we know in our heads would move deep into our souls and that we will experience that joy and peace and love, that satisfaction of having you central in our lives. Lord, may we feed on you and would you come and meet with us now. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for introducing communion for us as well. Let's, as we remain seated at the moment, let's pray the words on the screen. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. If you're able, let's stand together. Is the Father with us? He is. Is Christ among us? He is. This is our God. Our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. We are indeed. Lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God, supreme over all the world, creator provider, saviour and giver. From a wandering nomad you created your family. For a burdened people you raised up a leader. For a confused nation you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd you sent your prophets. In these last days you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension. And we look for the coming of his kingdom. Amen. If you would like to take a seat, except for the worship band who could begin to come up, and Sonia as well. And uh, if you haven't received communion here before, if you're... uh, loving and trying to serve Jesus, then communion is for you. Um, um, If you just come up in a line, uh, just where the guys are there, if you come up in a line, I will serve you bread on your left-hand side at the front. Just come up in line. And if you take a step to your right, Sonia will serve you wine. Just a wee note that we're under instructions from the bishop to return to a common cup. So no longer little ones. We've got a common cup now. Um, But those who remain cautious of receiving uh, in the common cup can receive in kind. In other words, you can take the bread and by faith receive both the bread and the wine. All right? So let's receive together now. If you are uh, gluten intolerant, there are wafers. Just let me know when you come up. Okay. of acceptance from the good and gracious King so I will give to you my burden as you give to me your strength Spirit as I sing to you this prayer. 
standing, let's join in this prayer on the screen. Almighty God. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats. Just a few wee notices. And then we're going to have a, a closing song together, so we will do that song, guys. Uh, so, as earlier advertised, tonight is Story and Song Night, first Sunday in the month. And tonight we're going to hear a wee bit of Sonia's story, a specific part of it, not the whole thing, just a specific part of it. That wasn't for Sonia's benefit, that was for your benefit. Eight o'clock tonight, a wee bit of unhurried worship and uh, a little bit of Sonia's story. Prayer Club, Tuesday night at eight o'clock in the rectory or on Zoom. Holy Communion on Wednesday morning, Tots on Friday. This Saturday, yes, this Saturday is the Paint and Sip afternoon. So, ladies, it's all happening at 2 p.m. this Saturday. Um, is there any spaces left? All gone. Have you got all the money in? Okay, so some people, the debt collector will be looking for money between now and Saturday. So, uh, do. Uh, pay up that and have a brilliant time. Looking forward to seeing the art. Please do photograph that and share it on the church WhatsApp so that we can all admire, stroke, have a real laugh at what goes on. Uh, next Sunday afternoon, there's the UDR service of Thanksgiving and uh, Remembrance. We do this every year and uh, we love doing it. It's a privilege to do it. This year, the Police Male Voice Choir are joining them. So if that's something that you enjoy, and many people do, then you're invited as well. It's at 2.30. No, it's not. I can't read that. Yes, it is. 2.30 this coming Sunday. Not today, next Sunday, um, if you'd like to come. And then on the 21st, Sunday the 21st, there's not going to be a 10 o'clock service. I know that I've messed you around a wee bit more often than usual. But on the 21st, we thought it was good to have a combined service so that we could really support Christian Aid, one of our partner link uh, mission agencies, and we want to stand with them. So the Bells kindly are pulling together a luncheon aid of Christian Aid, but we need to know whether you're coming. So could you sign up, please, on this little sign-up sheet? And could you sign up today and certainly next week so that we've got an idea of numbers? Hi, Jason, and everyone else. So there's a sign-up sheet there um, for the 21st, 11.30 service combined, followed by a lunch in the aid of Christian aid. Yeah? Once the kids comes, it all goes the pear shape. All right, let's stand and sing as we conclude our time together. Let's praise God in the words of this song as we finish. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. As my shame is taken away, and my pain is hidden in His name. I believe. I believe. As I raise a banner. I 
of the God of life, the Christ of love, and the Spirit of grace be upon you this day and evermore. Amen. 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 Great to see you. There's prayer uh, over to your left. And do remember that word about a pain in the side. But if you want prayer for anything, then do go over there. Spend some time speaking to each other, chatting to each other, and we'll see you next week.